everyone, how's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University. And in this lesson, we are going to learn how to create our own Angular 2 module. But most of all, we are going to learn why would we want to do that? Why it's useful? It's coming right up. So far, we have been using the standard Angular 2 module, such as the browser module or the HTTP module. And we did create our own module, the application root module. But this is not the only modules that might make up our application. Imagine that you have created a set of reusable widget components. That's a good case for creating a module, because you want a set of components to be available to several parts of your application or even to several applications. Now, those components might be internally composed of smaller components that you don't want necessarily to expose to the users of your component. Such type of module is also known as a feature module. Let's give an example. In our small application, we are going to create a lessons module. This lessons module will contain one component, the lessons list, and it will contain one service, the lessons service. An Angular 2 module is simply a class, so let's write a class lessons module. In order to make it a module, we need to annotate it with the ng module annotation. The first thing that we need to configure in ng module is which components, directives and pipes are known to this module. So we are going to configure the declarations property and we are going to add it in the lessons list component. Next, we need to configure the lesson service. For that, we need to configure the providers property and inside it, we are going to pass it in a list of injectables that we need to add to the dependency injection system of Angular. So we're going back to our application module and we're going to remove the provider for lesson service. We're going to add it in to the module. One word of caution here, you might not always want to add providers to your module. We're going to see that in the lazy loading and shared modules upcoming lesson. Now for this concrete case, we are going to try this module out. So let's see if this is working. We are going to add the lessons module to the application module and we're going to start our application. Try to guess what happens. If we refresh the page, we can see that there is an error and let's inspect the error. It says can bind to ng4 of. This means that Angular does not recognize the ng4 directive. And we thought, this directive is implicitly available everywhere in Angular. So how can Angular not recognize this directive inside lessons list? Because it's inside lessons list only that this problem is occurring. The reason for that is that lessons list belongs to the lessons module. And the lessons module did not import the Angular common module, so it does not know the ng4 directive. So if we import the common module, this error will be fixed. If we now try this out, we see that we get a second error. And why is that? It's because the lessons list component is not recognized by Angular. But how can it be? Because it's part of the lessons module that we are importing. The problem is we have not declared the lessons list component as being part of the public API of the module. So it remains private to the module. It would be visible inside the module, but not to any other importing parts of the application. In order to mark it as public, we need to declare it inside the exports array property. If we now try this out, we can see that everything is working as expected. Our application is working as expected and the refactoring is successfully completed. We can see how modules can be useful in structuring our application by allowing us to split it into several reusable parts. But in the lazy loading lesson of the router course, we are going to learn why that might also help us improve the performance of our application.